Yes guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another match preview for you guys today. In this video we're going to be talking about Chelsea versus Sheffield United, the last fixture for Chelsea before we go into another international break, which I know it's a long ass two weeks, but it's the last international break that we have to deal with until about March or something, so we can try and slog through that. I'm going to try and have some good content to come out for the last for the two weeks through the international break. You guys do have to bear with me, I know it's a huge struggle, but we're going to do a couple of lives and stuff like that. And if there's any other piece of content that you guys personally want to see from me, drop it in the comment section below and I'm going to have a look at that as well. But yeah, Chelsea versus Sheffield United, I've already done an opposition analysis for this video as well, with Hal from the Sheffield United way, so if you want to get a perspective from a Sheffield United fan's point of view, check out my previous video, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below as well. And yeah, let's go into this video, but... Before we go into this video, as usual, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button as well, hit that bell notification button as well if you want to get that hat trick just to really be helpful to me. And yeah, let's go straight into this preview. Chelsea versus Sheffield United and the, on paper this game looks like it should be a win. We're facing the second of two teams that have the joint lowest goals scored in the Premier League so far this season. And yes, in re if you look at it from a results point of view, it looks poor for Sheffield United. They haven't had a win yet in this Premier League season as well, same as Burnley. And we're going into this game with two 3-0 wins in our last two games. So on paper this should still be a win. But I am going to echo the same thing I, should, I would have said for the Burnley match as one is do not underestimate Sheffield United even though they haven't gone for a win in recent games they've pushed it very fine against some of the teams they've been facing they've run Manchester City ragged throughout their games the same as Leeds Liverpool the game against Arsenal as well so we can't underestimate them and just think that it's going to be a walkthrough and that's going to be an easy win for us but also on the other hand we should be able to break these guys down it's not going to be a case of earlier this season or last season where we struggled to break teams down that sat in a low block or just put everyone behind the ball. I do think Sheffield United are going to play those same sorts of tactics but I do also think we have the quality to break them down now. Timo Werner is looking good on that left hand side and I think he's going to be playing up front as well anyway with the way Frank Lampard was speaking in the pre-match press conference. Hakim Ziyech had two, has two man of the matches in his last three games and he looked excellent again on Wednesday. And we look to be firing on all cylinders and we did say that this is a very winnable run of games that we were having from the Manchester United result. And we said that that nil-nil draw, whether it was a good result for us or not, would depend on the results afterwards. And we still look to be doing brilliantly. We, like we said, we have two 3-0 wins in the last three games. We've already got five clean sheets in a row, which I think is the first time we've ever done it in a decade. We're looking at a potential six before the international break. If it wasn't for the Southampton game, we'd be looking at an entire run of fixtures for the last month where we hadn't even conceded an entire goal. We're doing really well for ourselves right now. And if results even go our way, we could be one point off Liverpool at the top of the table. And like I already said, we're only going to say it quietly. But if we can get a run of form going, there's no reason to say we can't go for the title this season. This is the most open title race in ages. I still think, if I look at it from a purely unbiased point of view, Liverpool can go for this title. I think even without the Van Dijk injury, their side is just ridiculously strong. And they're still churning out results, and that's what you want to see from champions. So Liverpool are still going to be a very hard team to beat. It's annoying that the game when we faced them, we were doing so well against them until we had the City red card and we just threw the game away in five minutes. But the game in Anfield be coming in January so we can look forward to that but on to the Sheffield United game like we said they are a very strong defensive side and the longer that they last in this game the longer that they will build in confidence I think Sheffield United will be more than happy to leave Stamford Bridge with just a point if that's really all they can take they've got a couple of injuries going into this game as well we're going to talk about the team news in a little bit Ethan Ampadu as well who's been brilliant for them for most of the games this season except for the last game against Fulham where apparently he had a poor game but that's what was said on the opposition analysis He's not going to be playing for them either because he caught, he's, in, he's ineligible to play against his parent club. So Sheffield United are going to be weakened anyway and they've still got a couple of injuries as well. We're going to go through the team news now. Christian Pulisic for us is still out with the injury he got against Burnley. It does feel a bit jarring because it was just a little slip. He's been taken off as a precaution and should be back after the international break. So it's nothing too much to worry about. Kai Havertz is also out until after the international break because he's self-isolating. We already know what he's got. I still don't know if I'm going to get monetized or not for saying the word. So you already know what he's got. He's out for two weeks. 
Kepa's also back in the squad. Probably still won't start because of Mendy's form, but he's back after a shoulder injury. And Billy Gilmore is out, is still out for Chelsea, but he could be back around the December period. So I think we'll be able to see him within the next month. From Sheffield United's point of view, Billy Gilmore's still out. Why did I say Billy Gilmore? That's the wrong side. Sorry, guys. From Sheffield United's point of view, Ethan Ampadu is ineligible because he can't play against us. Jack O'Connell's out too, so they're really stretched for options in DM. Lee Smousse is out for the next month as well, while John Fleck is also absent through injury. So they're missing a couple of key players as well. Realistically, this should be a Chelsea win. I do think we'll be able to break them down. It's just how long it takes for us to do it. But I think we've got the attacking quality to do it. And we've kind of sorted out that problem with transitioning from defence to attack. We looked excellent against Burnley. Rens, we looked a little bit slower on at times, but I do think the game was also just handed to us and then we were just managing the game slowly from there. Also, Jorginho did have a poor game, but that's why I don't really have him in my predicted 11 to start. But let's go straight into the predicted 11 now. On to our predicted 11, and we're going to start off in goal, which just speaks for itself at this point. Uh, five clean sheets in our last five games since he stepped foot as our number one in goal. Edward Mendy has to start. I don't really need to go too far into it. Sheffield United are probably going to be really good from crosses. That's probably going to be where they're really going to try and attack us through set pieces and crosses into the box, which would have been a big issue for us last season and at some periods earlier on this season. But ever since Edouard Mendy and Thiago Silva have stepped foot into the side, crosses, corners, they ain't, been a, they ain't been an issue for us. Also, shout out Anthony Barry, who's done a really good job with setting us up in terms of attacking and defending set pieces as well, which is another huge reason for why he's been so good aerially this season. But we're going to start off with Edward Mendy in goal. Reese James as well starts at right back. He's been in amazing form over the last few games. I wouldn't change him. I wouldn't change anyone in the back four, which is a little bit of spoilers, but I don't think you'd expect me to say anything else at this point. So moving on into the centre backs, Thiago Silva has to start with Kurt Zuma next to him. Both of them haven't conceded a single goal since playing together in the Premier League. And we've been calling it throughout the summer. Not me, just myself. But I think a lot of people have been saying the main back two that we need to be playing next season was Thiago Silva and Kurt Kurt Zuma by his side and it's been working wonders they've been imperious together Kurt Zuma looks to be excellent with Thiago Silva by his side and they both complement each other's style of play excellently so we're going to go for both of them as our starting two centre backs Ben Chilwell on the left hand side as well It'd only be him or Emerson, but Ben Chilwell's just made that position his own since joining us. And we expect him to do that as well anyway, because we've already said how low the standard of quality has been in our left back since Ashley Cole's left, or since we moved Aspel Equator back into centre back. So, we're going to start Ben Chilwell on the left. It's another one we don't need to speak too much about it. In midfield, I'll probably go for N'Golo Kante in the lone DM in this one as well. I think it's going to be another one of those games where he's not going to get pressed too much. Sheffield United will be more willing to drop deep and try and protect the 0-0 draw if they can. Or, God forbid, if they get an early goal and they sit even further deep to try and defend it. So, I think this is a good game to play N'Golo Kante in DM. Same way with how poor Jorginho was in the Rennes game. I wouldn't start him in this game either because you have to play on merit. So, N'Golo Kante... Kante starts again in the lone DM role. As our two num attacking eights, I'm going to go for Mason Mount as the number one because he's been excellent as well since he's been moved back into that position. I'll go Kovacic next to him because we can't go for Kai Havertz. Yeah, I think, I think Mateo Kovacic would be the better option for us. And the other option would be to put Kante in centre mid, which I would be fine with. But I don't trust Jorginho in that lone DM role in this sort of game. And also he got bullied in this sort of game last season as well. So I wouldn't play him in this match either. Mateo Kovacic also doesn't really strike me as a natural DM either, so I think the only one that makes sense is N'Golo Kante for this one. So we're going to go for Kante, Mount and Kovacic as our two attacking mids, and as our three attacking mids and the DM. Um, Hakim Ziyech has made the right hand side his own, so he's got a start on right wing. Callum Hudson-Odoi I'm going to put on the left hand side because really and truly Callum Hudson-Odoi needs this game. He also really needs to make an impact in this game as well. We can't keep criticising Frank Lampard for not giving him game time when whenever he starts on the pitch he doesn't really show why he should be getting that game time either. We need to see more from Hudson-Odoi. So I would play him in this match just because I need to see him make an impact but it'd be interesting to see the type of performance he has. Up front as well goes for Timo Werner. 
I know people would pro maybe people would disagree and go for Tammy Abraham up front and Timo Werner on the left, and I wouldn't be too against that either. But I do also want to see what Callum Hudson Odoi could do, and also Callum Hudson Odoi needs to start making some impact on this side because the wages speak for themselves. He does need to start bringing in the performances that justify those wages. He hasn't had the game time to really build momentum, but same way he hasn't done anything to justify the game time. So now he gets a start, in my opinion. I want to see what he can do. Score prediction, I'm going to go 3-0 Chelsea. I'm not trying to be too overconfident, but I do think we should really be walking through these. It's not even on a disrespect thing. They haven't, they haven't won a game in the Premier League this season either. We cannot be there first. We should be walking through these guys. We should be keeping a clean sheet as well, and we should be moving on into the international break. Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points I've made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G, and I'll see you guys after the game for a review. Take care. And up the chills.